David, as you might be able to see, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. So I grew up with movies like Time Bandits, and I got a very big Time Bandits feel off of this movie at times. Was that an influence for you? Were you did you look back at that for this? Very much so. Uh, time Bandits terrified me as a kid, but I loved yes, it. Same. <laughs> but along the same, you know, I was thinking about this recently. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was another one. That sense of anarchy to the action sequences was something we looked at a lot, even the color tone of Skull Rock. Mm. And that is something like... Time Bandits and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom were both movies that I was obsessed with, but utterly terrified me. <laughs> the scene in the closet in Time Bandits always scared me when they when Those they go scared. in there for the first time. Yeah, yeah exactly. I felt the same way. <laughs> Jude, it's interesting. Captain Hook tends to be a very flamboyant villain, but I think you approach this part from a place of real hurt and pain. That's sort of that, and, and that has something to do with the with the way he's depicted here. And I won't spoil the, the the change in the relationship, but I wonder approaching the villain that way, what that was like for you, finding that dramatic uh, center at, of, of him in this portrayal. Well, it was the it was the the new angle and it was it was on the page and uh what was exciting was being able to explore the past that that gave you know his actions his hurt his fury a little more uh gravitas a little more made a little more sense um and drew a lot of the points that we kind of know about him together and i hope the flamboyance is still there in that he's got a you know a certain panache and he's got a certain flair and he's also got a, a, a um uh, a relish of power, uh, which he uses over his crew. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to really bed him in. I wanted him to look weather beaten and exhausted and because he's the symbol of getting old. He's the symbol of, you know, deterioration. <laughs> I think of that monologue you have in particular uh, in, in the sort of the prison hold. And again, I won't spoil this, the, the yeah. specifics of that monologue, but it's a major part of what this hook, of what drives this hook. And I wonder how you prepared for that scene in particular and how important that scene was to you to get right. Well, a huge amount of it was in the writing. Um, mm -hmm. And David and I would then sit and, and pick it apart and really be on the same page so that we knew exactly what had happened to this mm -hmm. person and what all those relationships meant. And then uh, you sort of plug it in, I like just emotionally, and you 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 give it honesty and conviction. And um, it was easy in many ways to, to, unfortunately, to make parallels. You think of you know childhood mm. soldiers, or you think of people, children put in awful scenarios, seeing things they shouldn't mm -hmm. see, and what that leads them. What, what what does that do to a child? What does that do to a person? David, one of the big changes that that's made to the to the story here is that you have uh, lost girls mixed in a lo among the lost boys, and that has led, unfortunately, to trolls online uh, accusing you of, of wokeness and things. Already, what do you, what do you say to that kind of criticism? How do you you know what do you say to those to those critics back if you could respond to them? For me, being a lost boy is a state of mind, mm -hmm. and it's as simple as that. Similarly, you have uh, Yara Shahidi playing uh, Tinkerbell, which is right before uh, uh, Haley uh, Barry plays, uh, or excuse me, Halle, Halle Bailey plays uh, uh, Little uh, the Little Mermaid. Uh, and this is obviously signaling diversity in Disney's ranks. Are you happy to be leading that charge? Uh, and, and again, sort of uh, pushing back against people who are angry. 100%. That's like, that's an honorable charge to lead. Right, right. Absolutely. Are you excited to see what The Little Mermaid brings? Or is, is that a movie you're looking forward to seeing? I'm so, I... Uh, when I was nine years old, started a Little Mermaid fan club, or no, it was called the Under the Sea fan club with me and one other friend. It was just us. But that's always been my favorite Disney movie. I'm so excited for the new one. I wish they had shown it to me already. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on. Yeah, no, it seems like you're in the Disney family already. <laughs> someone right out there that can make yeah, this happen. <laughs> Well, 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 Jude, to bring it all back to, to Time Bandits, where we started, uh, you know, I, I grew up on movies like that. I, and, and now I have kids myself. So showing them what's around now is interesting. As a parent, what are you looking for in children's entertainment now? What are some of the, the movies that sort of spark you as, as you show them to your to your kids? I'm looking for the experience I had and clearly you two had when I watched Gilliam's films for the first time, when yeah. I felt I felt a little out of my depth. I felt intrigued, terrified. Mm -hmm but utterly stimulated. You know, Cruella de Vil to me was the reason I loved 101 Dalmatians, which is an odd reason, but it's because I remember how scared I was. And I remember being uh, surprised, but also sort of weirdly stimulated by the fact that I was this scared um, through something I knew was make-believe because it was also, it was animated and seeing my sister scared. And um, so that kind of, 
stimulation that leads to curiosity, that leads to questions, that leads to conversation, that leads to imagination. I mean, that's, that's a path I've, I, I live on and I love and I hope to lead my children down. And Dave, for you, I think both of your Disney movies, this one and Pete's Dragon, certainly speak to some of the darkness that we were talking about in Gilliam earlier. Is, yeah. is that something that you, that you think is missing from children's entertainment now in general that, you, that you'd like to see more, more prominently displayed? I don't know if it's missing. You know, as long as I keep making movies, it'll be there. Um, <laughs> right. But it's something that I always valued in the in the movies that like like ta like time time edits. Mm -hmm. I was really taken with how scared it was, how scared it made me, and yet mm -hmm. how much I wanted to rewatch it and rewatch it and mm -hmm. rewatch it. And there's something to that. There's something nurturing and helpful about getting to face that darkness at a young age in the safe environment of an adventure film like that. And I think of all of my, all of the films that made the biggest impressions on me scared me in some way and helped me face the darkness that I have to deal with as an adult. So I, I hope to continue that tradition. I hope to keep making movies that scare kids just enough, but not too much. And, and if there are other movies that do that, that's great too. But I think there's also room for, for just stuff that's just fun that just makes you laugh. Like sometimes yeah. that's all you need.